Jack Sawyer, Joe Tierney, Frankie Lavillier. On the 70th anniversary of the liberation of the three camps at Auschwitz, Stamlager, Birkenau and Monowitz will remember the three of the one million Jews who were murdered there. Marianne Grunfeld, August Spitz, Therese Steiner, who were deported from Guernsey in April 1942. Today I'm with the Chief Minister. Yet again, yet again, every year we seem to come here. Is, well, I asked you a similar question. Is there not more we should be doing? Well, I think since last time we spoke, there has been more. We've got the uh, United Nations uh, Convention on the Right of the Child uh, now ratified. Uh, that's something you've been asking me about for a number of years whilst I've been Chief Minister. Uh, and I'm pleased that we've made that progress. The so we need to, know what it means we yet, need to, we need to continue to make progress in that direction. We've got, uh, in effect, uh, equality legislation. The first tranches that has has come in uh, with regard to race, and we need to keep uh, working on that. The next one we're working on uh, is with regard to sex. So we are making so, progress. But, but why so uh, and it why takes is time. it so slow? Why is it slow? These islands were occupied. They should have been first in the queue, shouldn't they, to implement these sort of safeguards? never happen again. This is why is it so why do we drag our feet on these things? Well I don't think we drag our feet I think as a tradition uh, we sort of look to legislation as the last resort because we feel that we're small enough uh, people will comply and deal with each other uh, in what we consider to be an appropriate way and generally that happens we then have to step back and uh, deliver legislation when it's not when not everyone is complying so we don't take legislation as a first step uh, but we take it when it's necessary and that's why we're bringing in those changes right the child, I, you know, I'm, I welcome. Obviously, it's been implemented, but the public doesn't know anything about it. There's the inquiry going on into abuse, which has been going on now. Now, because people, exactly the same as the Holocaust, people don't speak out. They haven't spoken out for years about child abuse. It has to be dragged out of people. People don't know what the Convention on the Child means. Where, why didn't every household have a leaflet explaining these are your rights? This is what should be happening. Well, uh, uh, schools are doing that. If we look at Grooville School, they are. Uh, a rights enabled school they've worked with UNICEF and we know that other schools are uh, working on that agenda as well so That's actually it's about starting when our uh, young people are indeed young uh, talking to them about what their rights should be and what a, uh, a society that respects rights should look like uh, and that's how we're going to deliver the change. But there's an immediate need to understand the work about children especially, everybody in society needs to understand. There's a human rights group here, the Summer Human Rights Group here today. Why can't our government make them a grant, a £100,000 commitment, annual budget, to promote human rights in the island? Well, I think we all have a responsibility to promote human rights. At a time of uh, difficult financial uh, constraints within the government, we shouldn't always necessarily look for government funding uh, for changes that we want to see. I but think there are other ways that we can do it. I think governments they do, are they committed do, to do they that. Do, when you ratify these conventions, when you ratify them, that is part of the undertaking to promote them. That is part of the undertaking. Uh, and we do that as a government. We review all our legislation to ensure that it's human rights compliant. We put resources into that uh, in the law officers department. So we believe that we do our part, but we doesn't mean to say we need to give grants to various organisations when they themselves Better are doing it. Than they than are than doing it perfectly well themselves, and that's that's part of Jersey's history. Two hundred thousand pound wasted on a film, which no, I would much rather see it spent on human rights. One final point: there was mentioned there about grant uh, compensation that was paid to some people. Some people didn't get it for, for whatever obscure reasons for being taken away from Jersey. There's one particular case about the Japanese prison worker. <laughs> Is there anything happening on that that you know of? Uh, and we are doing all that we can in that regard because to us that seems like an unfairness. So we've taken that on. Uh, my officers are working with the United Kingdom to try and address that unfairness. Thank you much indeed. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. First Doug Ford, retired officially. What do you do now, Doug? I'm retired. I look after my grandson. Right. <laughs> this ceremony takes place every year. Yeah. One of the themes is not much else happens apart from the ceremony. What else should happen? What else should happen? Well, that's always very difficult because it's one of those things that if, if you like, they're keeping the memory alive, which is the, this year's theme for Holocaust Memorial Day, is something that you do 365 days a year. But then, of course, we do get um, almost subverted by life. 
and so it is it's good once a, you know once a year to actually take time out to reflect and see if the world has changed but museums you're very much a concern with museums really ought to promote the message on a daily basis to me. there's a horrible image there's a horrible thing that happened so horrible nobody's ever known anything so awful to happen in history well, i think they have yeah you only have to look at uh the uh, atrocities in Nanking in what, 32, 33, or look at what happened with, in, um, I suppose, well, to the Armenians in 1919. Look, somebody in the Ukraine shot down an airliner a few weeks ago. Somebody's not getting the message somewhere, aren't they? That's humanity. Yeah. You know, we, we can't change try to change the worldwide uh, community but we'll never do it no hope then oh, sure. remember that remember but why what's the point to make sure that our society remembers okay, okay. thanks thanks dad okay. i'm with uh, maureen what does this day mean for you well, I think it's important to remember the liberation of Auschwitz. I had family who got killed in Poland. We don't know the date. They disappeared off the face of the earth. No records of them anywhere. So we don't know the date when they died. And how do, how do you get to live it. with that on a daily basis? Knowing that your family... I mean, it gets a lot of publicity, especially this time of year, there's a lot of publicity. What happens in your family? What, what do you think about it? Well, I just remember all the the people who died and one and a quarter million children who perished, young babes in arms, happened, all, happened in Europe. But I wonder, I, is there not a constant grieving that goes on? Because I, if a family loses a child in awful circumstances, but this is so gross, so disgraceful. I think this, the generation growing up now are still carrying the scar. Yeah. Will it ever end? I don't think so, unfortunately. What do you think of I don't think anything has changed in mankind. We're what more aware of things that happen on a daily basis, as it happens in real time. And years ago, people would not have known of many atrocities. Does a ceremony like this help you personally? Um, I think it does help because the general, uh, general society, civic society, recognises what happens and we can never forget. Right. If it's just forgotten, then people will say it never happened. And there are a lot of people who say it never happened and they deny that it ever happened. And so it's very important to um, keep ceremonies like this. I and mean, I couldn't help but not notice today the child abuse inquiry which is going on in Jersey is being resumed again this afternoon in public session but even something like that so near home it doesn't attract a lot of public interest does it people for some reason they're too embarrassed they're too afraid don't want to really investigate do they well, this has always gone on but I don't I when I was growing up I wouldn't have ever countenance that such a thing was going on. Really? I wouldn't have heard of such a thing. I didn't know. But the anyone. Holocaust, when you were a child, what did your parents tell you about it? Well, I read newspapers. I, I went to Hebrew classes. Mm -hmm. I've been to Israel. Um, I went to Yad Vashem when I was yeah. still a teenager. Um, if you're growing up Jewish, you had to know about it. You knew people who had um, tattoos on their arms, right. who had gone through terrible privations. I knew people who were kinder transport children. Right. So it's quite personal. Thanks much, Steve.